And so please offer up your prayers, join us in singing, and know that as we worship together in community, in safe ways, we build up the body of Christ. We know ourselves to be God's beloved children. And we become God's light in the world. Worship will begin soon. Blessed be the one holy and living God. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. God be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, in glory everlasting. Amen.
A reading from the book of Isaiah. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fires, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia yeah, and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offering, offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Pray for you, Lord Christ. The words that are spoken, Lord, are mine. May the words that are heard be thine. Amen. More than 30 years ago, on the Feast of Pentecost, John and I brought our seven-week-old baby Sam to the parish of the Epiphany in Winchester, Massachusetts, to be baptized. Now, we were trying to be responsible parents. We talked with his four-year-old brother, Gardner, about Sam's baptism. 
We'd told him stories of his own baptism four years earlier so that he'd be clear that this was not something we were doing just for the baby. He showed himself equally disinterested in these stories and Sam's impending baptism as he did most things concerning his baby brother. Much to our relief, the attention of his grandmother, aunts, and Sam's godparents kept him sufficiently engaged that he watched the baptism without offering too much distraction or demanding too much attention. After Sam and a crowd of others had been baptized, we passed by the font on our way to our seats at the front of the church. Much to my horror, as we processed past the font, Gardner stopped, leaned over, and lapped water from the font. At the time, few people noticed, which given that I was the curate in the parish, really felt like good news. And, you know, honestly, as time has gone on, Gardy's lapping of the water has become a humorous family story and a really easy way of assuring parents that they need not worry about what their children will do in the midst of baptism because, frankly, my son has always taken it, already taken it to the limit. So it wasn't until Gardy was in fifth grade that I realized that actually his action had significance, that it mattered. As his fifth grade class studied poetry, the teacher invited the students to write autobiographical poems. When I read Gardy's poem posted on the wall for Parents' Night and realized that he was thinking back on Sam's baptism, one line blew me away. Holy, holy, holy me. The words of the Sanctus the drinking of the blessed and blessing water of baptism in some non-cognitive way. Four-year-old Gardner understood that baptism was about identity. It was about being claimed as God's beloved. And as he watched his baby brother being baptized, he wanted to make absolutely certain that he too was blessed and beloved of God and he did the only reasonable thing. He drank the holy water. In reflecting on today's gospel, biblical scholar David Loos explains that baptism is done only once because however, whenever, and by whomever it's done, it is full and sufficient Christian initiation. Yet Los goes on to remind us that while baptism is done only once, it is not once and done. Los insists that every day we should reflect on our baptism because our baptism is essential to our identity. Baptism tells us who and whose we are. Luke reports that a great crowd of people filled with expectation and questioning in their hearts whether John might be the Messiah gathered on the banks of the Jordan to be baptized. John explains to them that he is not the one he says, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming.
and fire. The basic elements of creation, fire and water, along with the earth from which we are made and the wind in which the Holy Spirit moves. All of creation, every bit of creation, is present in the midst of the baptism anticipated by John. For Luke and for us, baptism is elemental. In the baptism of Jesus, the evangelist wants us to understand that Jesus became fully human made of the earth, dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. And Jesus, along with the great crowds of people gathered at the Jordan to be baptized, all are human. All came to be blessed in God's name. Jesus' baptism affirms his humanity, his unity with us. But as those who joined Bible study Thursday morning discovered, Luke's version of the baptism of Jesus differed somewhat from Matthew and Mark. Because actually, Luke does not mention John the Baptist baptizing Jesus. In fact, between describing baptism by fire in the Spirit and saying, now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, in those verses that you might have noticed that the lectionary omitted, well, the evangelist reports that Herod actually had imprisoned John the Baptist for speaking truth to power as he condemned Herod's taking of his brother's wife. For Luke, the potent force in baptism for Jesus, the potent force in baptism for that great crowd on the Jordan, the potent force for baptism for you and me is the Holy Spirit. As the Apostle Paul makes clear in his first letter to the Corinthians, the baptizer's role is invoking God's Spirit in welcoming each beloved child of God into the body of Christ. Paul chastises the Corinthians saying, each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. And then Paul asks, has Christ been divided? What Luke wants us to hear and see is not that John or any other human baptized Jesus. He wants us to hear and see that he the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Or if we think ahead to the Pentecost story in Acts 2, we might imagine, the hymn we just sang does, that the Holy Spirit rested on Jesus and on the others like tongues of fire. Earth, water, wind, and fire come together in our baptism as we are affirmed as beloved children of God, made in the image of God from the clay of the earth, infused with breath from the Spirit of God, and baptized by God's Holy Spirit. 
As the prophet Isaiah reminded the people of Israel living in exile, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Holy, holy, holy me. Gardner's benediction contains the truth Luke wants each of us to understand. Baptism does not make us beloved or blessed. We're born that way. Rather, baptism is an outward and visible sign, a sacramental affirmation of our belovedness and our inclusion in the body of Christ in which all belong. Baptism is about identity. In baptism, we affirm that we are beloved children of God and belong to God in Christ. And so each day, remind yourself, holy, holy, holy me. Repeat to yourself, I am a beloved child of God, and God delights in me. God's gift to each and every one of us is God's unshakable love for us. While we may not always love ourselves or love our neighbors or God perfectly, God's love for us is unconditional. We are God's beloveds. Quite literally, this is our birthright. It is our identity. Each and every one of us is a beloved child of God. And so the question for each one of us every day is how do I respond to this most amazing gift of God? How do I live from an understanding of my blessedness? How do you live from an understanding of your blessedness? Don't look to your faithful friend, or maybe holier-than-thou family member. Don't read books searching for answers. Don't ask wise people to put words in your mouth or notions in your head. The only way forward is to live your way into your answers. As Quaker spiritual teacher Parker Palmer would say, let your life speak. Look and listen for the times, ways, and places that you are most fully alive. Notice those times, ways, places, and connections where you feel your spirit deadening, where you feel your heart diminishing. Notice, notice and nurture those moments, those relationships, those activities that set your heart on fire. Know in this season of epiphany and always that you bear the Christ light within you and you, beloved child of God, you were created to let that light 
shine. Now, by way of prayer and blessing, I want to close with one of my favorite Mary Oliver poems, When I Am Among the Trees. When I am among the trees, especially the willows and the honey locust, equally the beech, the oaks and the pines, they give off such hints of gladness. I would almost say that they save me and daily. I am so distant from the hope of myself in which I have goodness and discernment and never hurry through the world but walk slowly and bow often. Around me the trees stir in their leaves and call out, stay a while. The light flows from their branches and they call again. It's simple, they say, and you too have come into the world to do this. To be filled with light and to shine. Amen. Let us together affirm our faith in God and renew the promises made at our baptism. What is your faith? I believe and trust in God, the source of all being, creator and sustainer of all things, and in God, the eternal word, my savior, Jesus Christ, and in God, the Holy Spirit, the giver of life and truth. This is my faith. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you cherish the wondrous works of God and protect the beauty and integrity of all creation? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Arise, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We pray as pilgrims. Lead us to your presence. Let us see your glory. Almighty God, grant to your church wisdom. Work through us that we might lead many to knowledge and love of you. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, and our Bishop John, for our clergy, Jane, Jennifer, Dean, Beryl, Peter, Antonio, and Steve, 
and for our vestry and staff. Lead us to your presence. Defend the needy, Lord Christ. Rescue the poor and thwart all the waves of, of oppression. that pay you homage. We pray for President Biden, for the members of Congress, the governor, the mayor, and all who serve in government during these difficult days. Lead us to your presence. Bless all teachers and students as they return to school and university. May they find wisdom as well as knowledge. Give them a hunger Lead us to your presence. Loving God, you are the help of the helpless and the deliverer of those in distress. Bless and heal all those in need. We pray for Sheila. Juliana, Evelyn, Rose, Vandaloo, Isaac, Amos, Kim, Shelley, Luis Eduardo, for our homeless siblings, and all those whose lives and livelihoods are affected by COVID-19 for all refugees and immigrants, for an end to violence of all kinds. Lead us to your presence. Great Redeemer, you have guided us to your presence. You have shown us your glory. Grant us that we may at last see you face to face. We remember especially all those who have died Lead us to your presence. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen.
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And so as we gather this morning, are there special prayers or anniversaries, birthdays? What should we be praying for? Whom to, yes, yes. It's a birthday. Birthdays are good. <laughs> Are you on your way or counting? <laughs> so we'll pray, we'll give thanks for Jake, and then we'll bless Kay's birthday. And if anything comes in on Facebook Live, let me know. M4. And for finals this week. Holy and life-giving God, you call us to live in the light. And so we raise up in prayer Lori's family, friends, and those gathered in her circle of beloveds. And Lord, we ask your blessing upon them. We ask for good health and energy, and we pray that they might continue day by day to walk in your light and show forth your love. And we pray for all those in the midst of finals that they will not feel like insurmountable burdens, but in fact, opportunities to excel or at least say, I'm done. So God, Bless all those in the midst of testing. And Lord, we give thanks as Jake continues to recover from his knee surgery. Lord, we give thanks that he is healing well and that he and Sue are getting ready to travel again. Lord, may the world be a safe place for them to travel. And may Jake's new knee enjoy its adventures. And Lord, as we gather today, but truly every day, we give thanks for your daughter. Give thanks for your daughter, Kay. Lord, she listens deeply to your love to your light within her and in her generosity and yours she shares herself with us with our church with the interfaith community and with our world lord we ask your blessing upon kay 
We ask that you might continue to bless her with good health, that she might continue to be a model for us of living in the light and showing your love. So, Lord, watch over her. Guide and guard her, strengthen and sustain her, and bless her path step by step, day by day. Amen. Amen. Blessings. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, and offering and oblation to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy, because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters and made us citizens of your kingdom and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you, 
You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons that would blessed Mary, blessed Luke, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come. We may praise your name forever through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
the gifts of God for the people of God. This is the Lord's table, and all are welcome here.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Remember, my friends, that life is short. So be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. I call your attention to the announcements on the back of the bulletin, just to highlight that we will gather on Zoom on Tuesday evening for Renewal Tezay. I think we all could use a little renewal. So I encourage you to open yourself to a time of chant and prayer and let it soothe your soul. And that is on Zoom Tuesday evening. We continue with our regular programs of healing Eucharist in the chapel, followed by a Bible study based on the lectionary on Thursday as well as tea and talk on Zoom on Friday afternoon. And of course, the shower program on Saturday. So um, join us on Zoom, join us in person. Return next Sunday, whether you're on Facebook Live or you're here in the sanctuary. It is a pleasure to gather in community for worship and I just um, sort of encourage those who might not know exactly what the migra Great Migration Group means. It just means it's a book group. Uh, the group that chooses books that are going to encourage and invite conversation about how we live as Christians in the world. And the Great Migration Group is starting a new book, Valerie Kors, See No Stranger, a memoir and manifesto of revolutionary love. It's a great book to read during Epiphany season. I encourage you to um, get the book in the bookstore or pick up something else in the bookstore um, and join the group on Friday evening. The group meets monthly and stay on Zoom until it makes sense to gather in person and over food. Um, and then January 30th will be our annual meeting. Mark your calendar, plan to be here. We will begin with bilingual worship at 11 and continue in the sanctuary with a Bare Bones annual meeting. We will live stream the entire uh, worship and annual meeting so that our Facebook Live community can join in both in worship and the annual meeting. But one of the things that is essential to an annual meeting is elections for new vestry members and new delegates to our diocesan convention. So I invite you to think and pray about whether you might be called to serve or as a delegate uh, representing St. Luke's at the Diocesan Convention. Um, think and pray. Nominating committee members Mackenzie Stribick and Ryan Blazer are here today. Talk to them. They want to persuade you to run. Some people are laughing. 
Alrighty. We.